From our collision with Captain James Cook in 1769 to the early 1860s, Rongofakata endured a great amount of economic and social change. From the 1830s to the 1850s, despite waves of Pākehā settlers and crown plots of overthrow, we, Rongofakata, were successful in maintaining our mana whenua, mana moana and mana tangata. William Williams descended on the capital of Tūranganui Akiwa, which was Manutuke, in May 1840. He knew that the most prominent rangatira of the area would be there. Fourteen of our tipuna agreed to sign the Treaty of Waitangi. They were Ke Mara Manutahi, Te Waka Māngere, Paratene Tūrangi, Te Tūruki, Maronui, Te Kainga Kiore, Taua Manaya, Tu Warakihi, Paia Te Rangi, Rewiti Tuhura, Te Pane Pane, Whakahingatū, Te Mimio Pāwa, and Mātenga Tu Kareaho. Two of our most prominent rangatira did not sign, Te Waka Pirohuka and Kahutia. Neither did our rangatira wahine. A sure sign that the treaty was not widely considered to be significant in their eyes. The idea that the British Crown would one day supersede our absolute authority in Tūranga was inconceivable to our rangatira. We continue to maintain our birthright to tino rangatira tanga. This is Wurumu Kingi, also known as Pai Aterangi, a prominent Ngāti Maru chief of Rongofukata who signed the Treaty of Waitangi. His father was Te Apaapa Oterangi, depicted here as a Pautoko Manawa. He is also known for his creativity and craftsmanship and built the world's largest surviving Manu Ote. As a member of the Hoho movement, Wurumu witnessed forced surrender under threats of violence from the Crown in 1865. This persecution marked the beginning of the deliberate destruction of our ecosystem at the hands of our treaty partners. Wurumu Kingi was one of 104 original Ngāti Maru owners of Awapuni Moana and Paukahu, a once flourishing coastal lagoon and crucial ecosystem, the final resting place of Rongofukata himself a living taonga. Over the years, our treaty partners strategically destroyed this place. They actually drained it and then turned it into a rubbish dump. Settlers knew that this site was significant to Rongofukata, and so, in a racially motivated move, the deliberate decimation of Awapuni was an attempt to destroy Rongofukata. Waves of board decisions and acts enacted by the settlers led to the unprecedented pollution of Paukahu, and now we are sitting on a buried rubbish dump that is leaking into the earth. Environmental experts have dubbed it an ecological ticking time bomb. Today, values of eco-domination which led to the environmental issues we are facing are still very much alive at governance level. As a treaty partner, the reinsertion of our mana whenua in areas like Awapuni is crucial to the survival of the ecological systems that sustain us all. Our values are that of preservation and conservation. Let the treaty breathe. We must act now. Tamati Wakamangere a rangatira of Ngāti Kaipoho, Hapu of Rongofakata, signed the Treaty of Waitangi. Wakamangere's younger brother is none other than Master Carver Raharuhirukupo, who revolutionised the art of Fakairo by embracing steel technology. Shortly after the signing of the treaty, Wakamangere passed away, and in 1842, Rukupo built iconic Whare Whakairo Te Haukituranga as a memorial to his brother. The Crown then stole it and took it to Wellington, and now it's at Te Papa. Sadly, the fate of Te Haukituranga is not unique. Most of our taonga were stolen, destroyed or dispersed all over the world. 
a clear attempt from our treaty partners to erase us, our knowledge systems and our technologies. Now, our taonga are locked in shelves and cabinets and institutions where we need to make appointments to see them. They are treated like dead objects that represent past primitivism. The grass skirts equals backwards attitude is growing tiresome. And after more than 200 years of gatekeeping, there is a global mind shift towards acknowledging that we must have greater access to our taonga. Taonga are not just objects. They represent ideas, systems and ways of doing things. We need to cut through the colonial brainwash and bring back our ways of doing and thinking. We are so done with intellectual imperialism. We live in the digital era and so human evolution depends on new and innovative ideas. An international knowledge economy is developing and so by studying our knowledge systems through taonga we have the potential to become global economic leaders in our own right, fulfilling the treaty promise of true tino rangatiratanga. Let the treaty breathe. We must act now. Paratene Tūrangi, also known as Paratene Pōpoti, a rangatira from Ngai Te Kete Hapu of Ngai Tāwhiri Rongofukata, was a signatory of the Treaty of Waitangi. His tribal estate includes Gisborne City, Titirangi, Kaiti and Sponge Bay. In the 1850s, he controlled all the natural resources, the port and the trade routes. Paratene was instrumental in the development of the local economy and establishing international trade deals. He also made strategic alliances with our treaty partners in the name of economic prosperity. We were thriving beyond measure and this turned out to be unacceptable as we weren't supposed to be better than them at the economy. In a letter that Raharuhirukupo sent to the governor in 1861, it says, We have the land in possession from which flows fatness, and from the fatness of our land we derive what we are now possessed of, mainly money. This will be the cause for which you will fight against us. Sure enough, Land wars would erupt not long after, resulting in the death of Paratene in 1868, followed by the siege of Ngātapa in 1869, one of the most bloodiest massacres in the history of New Zealand, a barbaric act perpetuated by our treaty partners and their allies. Paratene's descendants were forced to sell our ancestral lands under the threat of violence. The settlers then decided that Tauranga and Tūranga were too hard to differentiate, so they renamed Tūranga Gisborne after this guy in 1870, and kept Poverty Bay over Tūranga Nuiākiwa. Today, we continue to be alienated from our lands, resulting in the further degradation of our natural resources. The tick-the-box council mentality must end for we are key players in the economic future of this region. Let's see where a true treaty partnership can lead to. So, let the treaty breathe. We must act now. Rongofukata signed the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840 marking the beginning of a partnership between us and the settlers. Fast forward to the 1860s and the settlers would steal 400,000 acres of our land and commit war crimes against our people. In 1985, a claim was lodged to the Waitangi Tribunal. We were once again confronted with the might and resources of the Crown. However, an admission of guilt was inevitable. I would say that there is not one worse than this treaty settlement, what the Crown did to a people in this country. And that's not saying because they're sitting in the gallery, it is a fact. This is one of the most dastardly actions ever purported, ever set to upon any iwi tribe whanau in this country. The history that's outlined in this bill before the House tonight is not one that any one of us can be proud of, Mr Speaker, but uh, the generous acknowledgement by Ronga Whakata of the need for them to move forward has to be has to be put on record in this house. The Waitangi Tribunal has described the treaty breaches 
arising from the Crown military action against the Tūranga iwi as some of the worst in our history. And that's part of our history that none of us should be proud of. The words that we use quite a lot when we talk about treaty settlements is the partnership that is forged between iwi and the Crown. And the completion of the legislation and the completion of the third reading here today will cement that relationship, that partnership, in a new way. I think this is a, an outstanding effort by the Crown, by iwi, uh, to come together in a partnership and to go forward. It will take three generations and three different governments to find a solution. After decades of negotiations, we finally settled in 2011. The Crown acknowledges and apologises to Rongo Whakata for some of the most serious treaty breaches that occurred in this land. Rongo Whakata had remained in control of their own affairs until 1865, when Crown military forces unjustly attacked. Between 1865 and 1872, more than 40% of Tūrāna men died as a consequence of the Crown's military action. The tribunal quite rightly described this as a stain on our national history and our character. The Crown apologises sincerely for its failures since 1840 to respect Rongo Whakata Rangatiratanga and profoundly regrets that over the generations to the present day, its actions have significantly impacted on your social and traditional structures, your autonomy, and your ability to exercise your customary rights and responsibilities. The Crown seeks to restore its tarnished honour with the settlement. The Crown hopes the settlement will mark the beginning of a new relationship with Rongo Vakata, founded on the treaty and its principles. This was a staunch reminder to all of New Zealand that settler attitudes of imperialism will no longer be tolerated. It is those very attitudes that led to war crimes. Despite this, Rongofukata were prepared to give the Crown a second chance. We are now in 2020 and faced with the COVID-19 global health crisis. This unique environment has continued to test our treaty partnerships. So uh, the Minister of Environment, uh, David Parker, has uh, decided under, co under cover of COVID-19 that it's appropriate to change the Resource Management Act. Uh, and this emergency legislation is uh, an attempt and will seriously undermine our rights under the Resource Management Act as treaty partners. To you or for you, what is the contemporary expression of the Treaty of Waitangi for us now as Roma Whakata? The treaty is like rust, it doesn't sleep. Uh, we're constantly, um, as a tribe, having to defend ourselves in all sorts of spaces when it comes to our land. The Crown are very good at getting us into lolly scrambles, saying, well, here you go, here's some money, here's some of your land. I'm sorry that it's not what we took but here's a fraction of the land that we took that you can you know, go away and play with. You know, the issue we have, particularly here in Gisborne, Gisborne's a region one of four, I understand, around New Zealand, that has a council which has unitary authority. So it's a law unto itself. And that's the problem we have in Gisborne. There's no regional council that oversteps GDC. They're, they're an authority to themselves and we've got major problems on that front. Years and years have gone by and we are still faced with the same issues. Until there is a meaningful solution forward, we will not get over it. Let the treaty breathe. We must act now.